Welcome to AfricaCom TV, here at the 20th anniversary of AfricaCom in Cape Town, South Africa. We're joined now by Gillian from Deezer. Hello, Gillian. Hello, Africa. How are you? Good. Thank you very much. Have you had a wonderful AfricaCom so far? It's, it's really been busy this year and it's been fantastic and I'm looking forward today to actually seeing the exhibition and more of the sessions. Very, very good. Now, you'll be participating in the big data track a little bit later on today and we know that uh, there's been quite a lot of advancement, if you like, in the space on the African continent. Have we done it well? Wow, that's a big question. I think the innovation that we're seeing and the incredible rapid development that we're seeing, I'm going to say yes, I think we're doing well. We've got a long way to go, we've got a lot to do, but incredible positivity in that space. So what are some of the things that we are doing well that we need to continue doing, and I suppose some pitfalls that we need to start addressing now already if we want to realize a rosy picture at the end? You know what I love is the entrepreneurship. I love to see the small businesses, the job creation, the technology innovation. And particularly in the space that I work in, you know, music streaming, we have so many new little services that are popping up across the continent, giving, giving voices to those artists. You know, in terms of what we're not doing well, I'm going to go straight for education. I'm an IP lawyer and at heart I want to see those artists get their royalties. And there really isn't a lot of education, both around music, but also around the digital royalties. It's a, it's a real passion point for me. I, you know, I want to see that money flow through the chain from the top to the bottom, from the bottom up, etc. And, and that's really not something we're good at. What has been Deezer's approach in, I suppose, infiltrating Africa? So we're certainly nowhere close to where we'd like to be. We've, we're doing very, very well in South Africa. We are live all over Africa. However, we've got a lot of work to do. You know, we really haven't, st we need to go territory for territory, establish ourselves, talk to the people in the territory, find the right billing, find the right partners. So I think I would say that our approach is, is slow and careful. We want to go into each territory, do it properly before we move on to the next one. So we're going to work our way slowly and, and, and properly, I guess, through Africa. And key to that are partnerships with MNOs, with tech companies, digital service providers. Um, have you realized what the best practices are? What we've learned is that one of the best practices is always to include data for your user. Yeah. You know, people are really nervous. There's the whole bull shock issue. I'm sure you've heard it in every interview, in every session. And I, I feel that the best practice is, is to localize in each territory. Make sure you have the local currency, the right price, the data. You know, come with a complete offering that puts your user at ease and, and makes it, it, it just, it's not a decision to use your product because you've got your mix right. I would call that best practice. And the best way to, I suppose, expand into Africa surely is through mobile. Oh, absolutely. I mean, our users are completely mobile first. In fact, we've made a huge change in the Deezer system. Everywhere else in the world, a user is asked to put in their email address in order to register. And here we have what's called MSICN registration, which means you put in your mobile number as your username. This is a massive change for Deezer, whereas in Africa, it's something that we're used to. So it's one of the ways, looking at the topic this afternoon today, looking at the topic today in the panel, it's one of the things that's going to come up. It's one of the ways in which we've localized and adapted to the African continent. Really important. What uh, future developments and growth can we expect from Deezer? Deezer's looking at new products for Africa. You know, you can't take the same product, which is called Premium Plus, that you're using in Europe and the US and the UK, and think that immediately that's going to work in Africa. We need products that are lighter on data, products that are more sensitized to local content, products that are more directly attributed to a consumer who's mobile first. And I must say, the rest of the world is also becoming mobile first, but we're definitely leading that charge here in Africa. So that's something we're focused on at the moment. Now, onto that panel discussion a little bit later uh, today. Uh, what, um, what can we expect from it? I think it's going to be very interesting. You know, myself, I'm looking forward to hearing what Uber have to say. I think they've had a lot of controversy globally, and they seem to be, I think, managing it quite well. So I'm really interested to hear what they're saying because particularly as a service, localization is incredibly important to them. From my side, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to talk about how a global company adapts to a local environment. And I mean, you'll be able obviously to, to speak from it from first hand because you, you have you know, gone into certain markets and tried to 
a trial and error some things I would imagine and come out with a wonderful way of going okay maybe this is what we need to consider every time we go into a new market. I mean, for me personally, it's quite a unique situation because I work for a global company, a French company. However, I am a South African. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. I learn the global practices, but I'm easily able to apply the local standards. So it's, it's a very interesting challenge because there are some things that we do here in Africa that really baffle someone who comes from a European company that are completely different. Just as a silly example, um, any kind of internal processes like credit checking and fraud we are we have far higher standards than any you know they don't have those issues and they find that our red tape is in, it's baffling you know so it, I think that's just one of the issues that's going to come up this afternoon it's not the world's most exciting topic but it's a really it, it, it's true it's certainly important yep young people uh, are using mobile, uh, they are connected more so than I ever could be. In fact, whenever I, I you know, take a new device, I go, here, uh, play with it a little bit, <laughs> let's see uh, what's, uh, what, what's going to come out of it. There are 15,000 visitors to Africa Com this year. Surely this is an indicator of the interest that Africa and the readiness, I suppose, of Africa uh, to, to play in the space. Oh, I think that's definitely true. And I mean, this is my sixth year at Africom and my fourth speaking panel and I feel that the conference is busier than ever. So I think you're absolutely right. It's a sign that we want to do business in the mobile sphere and, and that we think it's important. Definitely. We're marking 20 years this year, which is an incredible achievement. Let's, uh, I suppose, project to 2037, which would be 20 years from now. Um, what, what, are you, what are you hoping for your sector uh, in an African context? I think it's almost impossible to predict. I think what we're really going to see is convergence of services. Whereas now everyone's kind of finding their feet, the VOD services, the music services, the data providers. I think in a, in a year such as 2037, it's not even going to be something we think about. It's going to be ubiquitous. It's going to be homogenous and converged. And we'll have moved on to some completely different challenge at that point. Thank you very much, Gillian Ezra, Head of uh, African Operations at DISA. This is Africa.com, where business happens.